we are glad to have with us today someone from the literary world. Someone who won the 2008 Singapore Literature Prize, someone who graduated from the Columbia University in New York, and someone who recently compiled a list of Singapore's censorship history from 1959 to year 2008. And that person is Mr. Ng Yi Sheng. Welcome, Yisheng, to Let's Talk. Thanks for having me, T. Luke. Let me start by asking you about the Literature Prize that you won in 2008. According to the National Book Development Council, which gives out the awards, you are the youngest ever recipient of the $10,000 top prize. How did you do it? Okay, um, first of all, how did I do it? Well, I started writing poetry quite early, um, you know, in, even in school, and, uh, and I got pretty serious about it after um, some prominent uh, writers took notice of my writing in creative writing camp. The whole, the whole idea of a youngest writer, it's actually kind of bullshit. You see, in uh, it, I'm, as Singapore likes the idea of oh, the young, promising, like Youth Olympics genius, oh, go, it's so good for our future, we're a young country, we're going to go very far. They're very, yeah, we, we like that, uh, that kind of publicity, that kind of image of someone. But, uh, you know, I was 20... Uh, I was 26 when I wrote the, when I published the book. I was 28 when I uh, when I uh, when I published. And uh, sorry, I was 28 when I won the prize. That's not so young. Singapore is such a technocratic society. What made you get into literature? I'm sure most Singaporeans don't quite understand the kind of world that you work in. Are you a square peg trying to fit into a round hole? You could talk about yeah being um, a technocratic society, but I think in my by my time. Uh, you know, the 90s, things were starting to change a little. You know, they'd set up the humanities program. When I was uh, 13 years old in Sec 2, I went to a camp called the Creative Arts Program. And of course, this was a very, you know, you can complain this was a very elitist camp. Our school system obviously feels that literature is, at best, a byproduct of education. Do you think this is the right attitude to adopt? And how do you think our society is losing out by neglecting the humanities? The result of all of uh, these many years of um, indoctrination, that uh, you know, you've got to focus on sort of um, let's say easy to score academic subjects, uh, which would be math yeah, like mathematics, science, even history, geography, because it's quite hard to confirm get A one in literature or Chinese literature or Malay literature. You've got. Um, the result is that we've become very narrow-minded. And uh, this, this sense of like wonderment at the fact that there's just so much interesting stuff out of there, I think that was generally discouraged by our system, uh, our school system. It's not just about literature. Um, it's about this general devaluing of, uh, uh, of um, creativity that happened first of all. And even after you value creativity, you everything becomes just about scoring marks. I mean, all that pressure that, that uh, parents have to get their kids into good schools now, it's, it's, re it's really sad. I mean, I've, I've got a 10-year-old niece and I pity her for how much tuition she has to do. Earlier in October this year, you made news when you were dropped as a mentor in the Ministry of Education's Creative Arts Program one month into your appointment. Tell us more about that episode. What happened? After one month, I suddenly got an email from MOE, from, uh, uh, from an official I hadn't met before, saying that I, um, they'd found a more suitable um, a mentor for my um, student, and the, um, the mentorship would be terminated you know, it, as of today, which was I mean, really strange. I, mean, like, I emailed like, to ask, what have I done wrong? Because... So you well, up with the yeah, I, I sent them an email I, because uh, it was like really curt the uh, the email. But I I thought like, well, well, I mean I I hadn't done anything wrong by my uh, by my side. I hadn't you know, yeah, I I hadn't even met her in person. Mm -hmm. You know, hadn't definitely hadn't said anything sexual to her. Mm -hmm. um, and but I thought, you know, well maybe you know the girl's mother. Had had Googled me and like found out that I'm involved in gay rights, mm -hmm. um, or or even that 
you know, that Chi Soon Juan is on my Facebook friends list. But irony would be that yeah. if you are involved in gay rights, wouldn't that make us a lot safer than, than anyone else? I know, but you know, <laughs> homophobes don't think logically. Oh, okay. People yeah. don't think logically. That, that's one of the great tenets of mm -hmm. life. Um, if, it, if I'd been just been doing it for um, like a, something I wasn't involved in, in like mentorship access program, I wouldn't have been as mad. But when the creative arts program does this to you, it's like your it's it's like um, yeah, your your mother slapping you in the face, I guess. When you when and you know in this case because it's these GE officers who you can tell don't agree with it. Um, it's like your mother being forced to slap you in the face by an unseen object. That's like... What do you want to see changed in Singapore? Yeah, what I would like is there to be free expression in the whole of Singapore. Mm -hmm. Like, not, you know... Like, yeah, not just because Hone and Hong Lim Park. Let's say Hong Lim Park, like, you know, around, like... You know, turn Hong Lim Park into, like, the borders, the international borders of Singapore. Let's, mm -hmm. Can we have... Spe well, just free speech everywhere. Can we not you know, like, crush, like, a, pol a political uh, demonstration every, every time it happens. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I get pissed off as, uh, uh, by Falun Gong as much as anyone else, but, yeah, let them, let, let them have demonstrations. Mm -hmm. We need it. In your blog, you had compiled a list of Singapore's censorship history from 1959 to year 2008. Why is censorship such an important issue to you? I didn't add it. And remember, this was in 2006, right? And uh, 2006, you know, got, um, got Singapore Biennale, right? Got, um, got Singapore Theatre Festival, right? Got, like, feeling of, like, yes, we're finally, like, coming, like, having more free speech, more free expression. And then you, like, you look at all the actual incidents that happened that year, and you go, like, oh, my God, we're in the Stone Age. We're, you know, okay, I, I still believe that it's important that uh, we do have a lot more expression that year, but like over and over again, the government and or, or civil service or bodies important, they just keep on, um, yeah, they don't buy into the philos into an, a philosophy of free speech. They just, you know, want to control, can control. And there's, and when you, so you list these, down these things and you realize, well, we are not yet free. It's, look, going back, um, Part of the question was, why do I care about, uh, about this? I think it's because um, my first... Well, okay, well, I realized I was gay when I was 10 years old. Probably the fact that I was aware of, um, of the marginal... Uh, be, of being marginal um, myself, yeah. I, I, I felt it, you know... I felt that there should be more gay visibility. I should not have been... Have, have had to spend and like nine years of my life not realizing there were a lot of other people like me. In the political arena, where do you think Singapore is headed? And is that, in your opinion, the right direction? Political arena? I think, yeah, changes. but I, okay. Well, I, of course, you know and I know that PAP is going to try to hold on to power for as long as possible. Uh, You've got to remember, like, PAP has been here since... It's been in power since 1959. It's 2009 now. That's 50 years. And in the grand scheme of things, you know, Singapore has been called Singapore since the 14th century. 50 years is not such a long time, lah. You know, you, humans will still be around for, like, for thousands of years more, you know, even if we're, like, mutated to adapt to global warming and all that. And we're, Singapore will... Singapore is going to is going to survive the PAP. It might, it might be a better place, it, won't, it might be a worse place, but we'll be, you know, history just keeps on happening. People, and people survive. Right. Thank you for your answer. Thank you for coming to Let's Talk Vision. Yeah, uh, it's been great having you here today. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, nice flowers. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure, as always, bringing you this show. Until the next time, I'm Chia Tilik signing off. Have a good week ahead and a happy new year.